Hello and welcome to our webinar. My name is Sean Walsh and I'm the JBoss Public Sector Specialist with Emergent. Emergent is a value-added, uh, excuse me, an award-winning value-added reseller and GSA schedule holder focused on solving complex business and mission challenges on behalf of the government, commercial, educational, and healthcare sectors. Emergent provides custom solutions along with end-to-end -end guidance and support in a full range of services. In today's webinar, we will be discussing Red Hat JBoss Enterprise Application Platform. Our goal is to better understand what an application server is, what core features you should seek when selecting an application server, and what role does an application server play in your organization. Once established, we will explore how Red Hat JBoss Enterprise Application Platform best fits these criteria at an intersection of functionality and value. So first, let's start off with the fundamentals. We'll begin with a simple analogy. Let's say you own a business which resides as an independent freestanding store. As the owner of the store, you also have to worry about numerous things like parking, cleaning, and security, as well as your actual business. As a result, you'll spend less time focusing on your core business functionality and waste more time worrying about supporting services. Now, let's say that you want to build a second, third, fourth, or more store with either a new business model or your existing one. You have to begin again from scratch, addressing each of these supporting services from the ground up. Quickly, you can see how managing, su managing supporting, and optimizing these various businesses ends up becoming increasingly complicated. As an alternative, from the start, you could have set up your store in a shopping mall. Then the shopping mall provides all of your common services to your and any potential other stores within it. Now you, as the business owner, can spend more time concentrating on what's most important to you, your core business functionality. Additionally, if you want to open up a new business or duplicate your existing business, you have a blueprint to quickly scale to meet demand or dynamically shift to meet new business goals. The same is true for an application. If you're building an application from scratch without the use of an application server, when you're writing your application, you have to worry about a variety of things, such as how does the application connect to the back-end database? How does it talk to different clients? as well as additional concerns like session integrity and security. Once upon a time, when programs were written in Perl or PHP, programmers had to worry about these things. Nowadays, if you write an application and it resides in an application server, typically a J2EE or Java Enterprise Edition server, the application server provides a variety of common services which applications may take advantage of. Rather than hard coding database calls, session integrity, and security measures, you can take advantage of libraries that come built in with the application server. Now you can focus on optimizing the application's function or business logic rather than creating custom services. Much like our shopping mall analogy, your application is now easily duplicated and building new applications does not require knowledge of supporting systems, but rather a simple call script. Now that we have a good analogy providing a conceptual foundation for an application server, let's get a little more concrete. So what is an application server anyway? In its simplest terms, an application server is simply an environment that provides all of the runtime services that your application needs, regardless of whether that environment is fully compliant with the enterprise Java. Of course, there are many vendors out there that are looking to deliver everything from software that you can install and manage locally to cloud-based environments that provide an entire application server platform to you as a service. So with all these options available, what are the key qualities you need to look for in an application server? A common set of services typically provided by a Java EE application server include security features, transaction services, web services connections, application connections, connectivity to databases, redundancy, clustering, and diagnostic capabilities. 
Most of the capabilities we just featured fall into four subsets of features you should seek when choosing an application server. The middleware services are the key services that your application will leverage. If your application is acting as a simple servlet engine, you won't need much more than a Tomcat server. If your application needs services such as messaging, a naming service, or even a transaction management service, you'll need to evaluate whether a Tomcat server can handle the intricacies of your transaction processing requirements. If it can't, you will need to go with a full Java EE application server that was built to handle it. Portability is a fairly easy dimension to conquer. As long as you're developing applications that code against the Java EE specification, you'll be able to port your applications from any one application server to the other. The problem arises when you start using application server extensions, which are little hooks vendors provide that allow you to dig deep into the inner workings of the server. The big problems with these extensions is that there's no guaranteed portability from one server to another. Keep focused on the Java EE specifications and you can avoid locking yourself into one particular server. Most vendors provide a set of tools that work within their particular server, be it tools for coding automation scripts, performance monitoring tools, or even applications that make it easy to identify existing or potential problems by reading log files or application traces. Does a vendor provide tools that plug into your development tools, such as Eclipse or NetBeans? And do these tools help simplify deployment or the scripting of automation tasks? A good set of tooling around an application server can make the difficult task of deployment and troubleshooting much easier, so it's something important to consider. And finally, how cloud ready is your application server? There's a great push to move away from consolidated data centers and instead move to a cloud-based environment. Many application server vendors are providing paths to easily move from their server software to their in-house platform, software, or infrastructure as a service offering. If moving away from an in-house data center is on your horizon, finding out what types of cloud-based solutions that vendor offers might be a worthwhile investment in time and effort. When scoping out the various application server offerings, there are a few points to keep in mind. Make sure any decisions you make meets your needs for the middleware services, portability, supporting tools, and cloud readiness. So now we address the why. Why choose to deploy on a Java EE compliant server? A Java EE compliant server ensures that your application will be platform independent. This means that you will be able to migrate your applications from one J2EE server to another as your organizational needs change. J2EE servers have a common security criteria ensuring that your application and organization will remain safe and secure from outside threats. Java is an open source language, and as such, J2EE compliant servers conform to open source policies and standards. Open source software means that you have transparency, not present in proprietary software, the ability to customize and repackage the software as necessary to meet your business needs, and typically lower cost when compared to proprietary counterparts. Lastly, because they are comply to open standards, there are a common set of supported APIs and frameworks. So we've established what an application server is, what it should feature, what features you should consider when choosing an application server, and why to select a J2EE compliant server. Now the true topic of our webinar has come to light. What is Red Hat JBoss EAP? Red Hat JBoss Enterprise Application Platform is the foundational component to the Red Hat JBoss middleware portfolio. All the other components in one way or another complement, manage, or expand the functionality of applications built using the Red Hat JBoss Enterprise Application Platform. In upcoming webinars, we'll explore the additional functionality afforded by the other core middleware solutions from Red Hat. Red Hat Enterprise Application Platform is the core application server but two companion technologies are also available with every Red Hat JBoss middleware subscription that provide additional functionality, empowering users to build, deploy, and manage rich Java applications. We'll go through all three here and discuss some of the key features of each, starting with JBoss Development, uh, Developer Studio. JBoss Developer Studio is an integrated development environment, or IDE, based on the Eclipse framework, which includes developer tools to write, debug, and test code in one environment. Featuring a number of pre-configured productivity tools, JBDS gives developers open choice to develop in the language of their choosing, including, but not limited to, Java EE 6, 
HTML5, Google Web Toolkit, and the Springs Framework. The inclusion of the dedicated build and test tools like Maven and Archillion means that applications built in JVDS are production ready and can be deployed directly into an awaiting JBoss Enterprise Application Platform server. Red Hat JBoss EAP, as we have established, is a full-fledged J2EE certified server based on the JBoss Application Server Community Project, also known as Wildfly. JBoss AS, or Wildfly, is the most widely used Java EE certified application server on the market, providing both Java EE web and full profile support. With the community core as its foundation, Red Hat JBoss EAP provides the finest enterprise grade J2EE certified server backed with enterprise support from the award-winning Red Hat support team. Red Hat JBoss EAP allows you to develop next-gen, highly transactional Java apps and supports the latest version of Java EE frameworks. Industry-leading quick startup time of less than 10 seconds ensures applications deploy quickly, exceeding on-demand scaling expectations. A lightweight application server means less overhead, leaving resources available for your applications, as well as the ability to support more instances per machine. In fact, JBoss EAP is optimized for multi-core and virtualized environments, supporting highly scalable, highly transactional applications. EAP6 is slim enough to run on its full form on the Red Hat OpenShift platform as a service offering designed for accelerated application development and deployments for organizations embracing a DevOps model. Red Hat JBoss Operations Network, or JOHN, is a robust management console designed to complement environments running numerous application instances in JBoss EAP servers. John helps you standardize environments and simplifies the deployment, management, monitoring by providing advanced monitoring of performance and availability for applications and services. Using John, you can identify and address issues before, across the application data center to ensure application service levels are met. Where does JBoss EAP reside in my stack? As this diagram demonstrates, the application server exists upon the foundation of your physical or virtual server hardware and runs on your chosen operating system, in this case, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. The application server provides the core services and libraries for your application to access things like backend databases, other networked applications, or web-enabled applications, as well as the intended client. What is cloud-ready architecture? Red Hat JBoss Enterprise Application Platform is designed for cloud-ready architecture. This means that you have a high degree of automation, flexible management choices, frugal use of resources, lean, agile development, as well as an open platform. As industry is moving towards cloud deployments, it's important to embrace a cloud-centric model for your middleware choice. This slide demonstrates some proof that the Red Hat JBoss Enterprise Application Platform is embedded in Red Hat's OpenShift cloud strategy. If you look in the center of the circle in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see the Enterprise Class Middleware stack. And next to Red Hat JBoss Enterprise Middleware, you see Java EE6. This shows that Red Hat's cloud deployments were developed with Enterprise Middleware in mind. The last few slides just demonstrate a few of the frameworks that are available in Red Hat JBoss Enterprise Application Platform. I'll briefly hold on each slide so that you can see some of the uh, frameworks as well as APIs available. Again, this is a list of the currently supported APIs by default in the Red Hat JBoss Enterprise Application Platform. Uh, each version of EAP does support a distinct set of APIs. Updates are available to an extent, and as new versions are released, certain APIs are dropped as their usage and favor declines. Now we address the question of JBoss versus the competition. So what is the big deal about Red Hat JBoss, and why should you be considering it over alternative options? 
Well, a core component to the, any Red Hat product is a subscription based on a renewal. Red Hat products are basically chosen by election every year. Each year you have the option of subscribing to continue your support for your Red Hat JBoss product or any Red Hat portfolio product. Whereas with a competitive offering from IBM or Oracle, you're stuck with a large upfront licensing cost as well as ongoing support costs. A difference in the development model we've talked about in previous webinars comes from the open source development model. Red Hat bases all of its products on open source technology. It means that you are getting code that's developed by a community collaborative development effort with hundreds, possibly thousands of contributors. Competition offerings typically subscribe to a private proprietary model where the development is driven by the opinions of a few rather than open source community. Standards and support is also a key difference in the open source versus proprietary development model where Red Hat JBoss products across the portfolio subscribe to open and transparent and transparent implementation and standards, whereas again, proprietary offerings are more closed and dictated by the organization rather than community standards. One of the last key differences between a Red Hat offering and competition offerings comes in the form of solution catalog and pricing structures. Red Hat products are simply sold by core counts on your server, whereas Competition offerings uh, tend to come with complicated uh, built-in reasons for volume purchases, discounts at numbers, and it, it, it's they're just not simple to understand how you are getting your price. This slide shows a cost savings over time uh, with a JBoss subscription. We've mentioned before that open source software tends to come at a much lower cost, and you can see just based on the license versus a JBoss subscription, how dramatic the difference in cost is, even in year one, as we see a JBoss subscription costing roughly $6,700 and an Oracle WebLogic license costing well over $25,000 per CPU. Over a total of three years, you can see a life savings when compared to Oracle's WebLogic of nearly $261,000 or 87%. These life cycle calculations just add up as your core counts increase. The savings built in by default for a JBoss subscription just run away with the uh, comparison. So that's all of our slides for today. Again, my name is Sean Walsh. I'm the JBoss Middleware Public Sector Specialist.